Yo, yo, yo. We are here live. Create. California. Just getting all set up here. It's going to be a blast. I'm going to just getting set up. Gonna have a good time here with you all. Just wanna make sure all the administrative, all the administrative stuff is happening. Okay. Let's see who we got. Oh, we got, got a guest joining us. Hey. What's up? Hey, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Brittany, it's Maceo, hello. Hi, Maceo. <laughs> this is so cool. Um, what a great way to meet someone new around an awesome campaign. I know. I was thinking the same thing. I was looking at your Instagram and I was like, oh, I'm already stalking this person and I don't know him, but I will tomorrow. So it'll feel less creepy. No, it's, it's like, the, it's like, you know, it's 2020. It's the, it's the, it's the, the way we do it now. You meet complete strangers on the internet. And it I helps, know, you know, it it's helps so, I, have a, I have a whole family in Sweden that I'm friends with and stayed with once because I met one of them on Twitter when I was like 19. So, you know, it's, what is it? What, what is, you know, friendship anymore? I love it. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And what what better thing to bring us together than this awesome initiative and campaign? So um, maybe let's just get going. I um, since we don't know each other, maybe we start with introductions. Yeah. And then we can talk about our stories and how we how we see ourselves as creative people out in the world. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Um, do you want to? So you 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 maybe you maybe start off. Tell us a little bit. Tell us who you are. How you see yourself. And um, and maybe what brought you to this, and who your guest is as well. <laughs> That's Emmy. That's my eight-week-old puppy, um, and she's very excited. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I'm Brittany Curran. Hi, everybody. I am an actress, and I um, a friend of mine actually, um, uh, Matt, who I met at UCLA. Went to UCLA. Um, Two things that have always been important to me are academics and the arts, and specifically those things together. And so it was perfect that my my friend, one of my closest friends who I met when I was at university at UCLA, is actually the person that told me about this and brought me in. And I was like, oh my God, this is so perfect. Um, yeah. Because arts in the school is a big reason why I do what I do today. Um, and so yeah, so anyways, I'm an actress. I've been acting since I was 11 years old. Um, I've done a lot of TV and film. Most recently, I was on this show called The Magicians that was on sci-fi um, for five years, and that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of magical fun. And um, yeah, exactly, tutting and stuff, very good. Um, yeah, so I've been acting for a while, and I grew up going to public schools uh, in LA. Well, in LA County, I went to the Burbanks. In the, well, I was born in Massachusetts, and then I moved to LA when I was 11. And are you from the East Coast? I was born in Massachusetts and also LAUSD. Oh my God, what part of Massachusetts were you born in? Uh, Dorchester. Okay, cool, I was born in Weymouth. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, yay, see? Internet, east to the friends. west, east to the west. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, I moved to LA when I was um, when I was 11, I went to BUSD, I was in the Burbank School District. Okay. And I, my favorite memory of, um, of school was choir. And the arts were just so, so important to me. And this came at a perfect time because both my, and, sorry, both of my parents and my brother are all actually teachers um, in the school district. And they all, my mom, my brother teach PE. And so they are in the arts and they had just been talking to me about how budgets were being cut. 
about how their coworkers were losing their jobs, all of these things. And I swear, like a week after, like we had this big conversation over Zoom, um, my friend Matt hit me up and told me about Create CA. And I told him, I was like, I literally was just worrying about this and just thinking about this. And, um, and I was like, yeah, I wanna do whatever I can to help and, and help get the word out there because arts and schools um, informed my young life so much. So yeah. what about yourself? So, so me, I, uh, like I said, uh, born in Massachusetts, but went to school in LAUSD, public school kid. And I can tell you, I was from the earliest age dancing around in my underwear to like music videos. And then when I got to elementary school, I joined the band. I played clarinet, um, was writing poetry. And, you know, I can remember every band teacher, every art teacher I've ever had because they were always encouraging me. And now um, I'm an artist, a performance artist, a curator and a consultant. So pretty much how I make my living is all around the arts. Um, and I think that when you were talking about your passions like of academia and, um, and, and, and arts, I think that like knowledge and creativity are such an important part of what has allowed me to, to make a living for myself, but also to have like a sense of identity to know that my voice matters and to know that yeah. you know, I'm, I can go out in the world and do things, you know? Um, and it gave, it, gave me, it gave me that confidence of self to say, you know what? Like, this is my perspective. I like blue and green and purple and all the colors. And, you know, and I think that's really magical. So for me, when I heard about this initiative, I was like, yo, arts in the schools, you don't get to have you know, Netflix and Apple and, you know, Disney without people having it, you know, having access to it at such an early age. Museums yeah. and so much of the world we occupy, fashion is, you know, created by people who had opportunities at a young age to, um, to practice developing those skills before they yeah. decided they wanted to go pro. Um, so yeah. I'm like, yeah, sign me up. And it, I think it's cool we get to talk to each other about it. Um, I think the first thought is, you know, for, for me, when did you, like, begun, begin to see yourself as, as, an, as an artist, you know, like, how did, or as a creative, as, a, like, when you look in the mirror and decided, you know, this is who I am, or was it always a thing? Um, it was it was a thing for a really long time. When I was really little, I wanted to be a flight attendant. So there was a short period <laughs> before I was an artist where I was a flight attendant in my head. Um, and I would practice the seat buckles. I don't know. That was my favorite part. I think that was the main reason why I wanted to be a flight attendant. Which, you know, what I realized is the performance part. So they would, like, Wait, yeah, you're on stage play. doing the, like, voice and everything. Yeah, and they do. They put the buckles together and they tighten it. And, like, I would literally sit at my seat and I would, like, practice. And now, I, looking back, I just realized, oh, I liked the performance part of being a flight attendant. And also the fact that whenever I was on a plane, I was going to Disney World. So I think I really associated flight attendants with Disney World. And I think that's true for me, too, because I wanted really? to be a scientist. But the reason I wanted to be oh. a scientist is because I wanted to be Bill Nye. I love that. But yeah, <laughs> it's like, so that's I, the thing is this the young kid wants to be a scientist and you see this guy who's on television, who's, who's a scientist, but also a performer. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so you, you got your start there by wanting to be a flight attendant. We're having this moment of, re of, of revelation of, wow, even, even my earliest dreams were performance dreams. Yeah, totally. And I think it became more like clear on the nose when I, I started doing dance. I started doing um, ballet and jazz and tap in, in Cape Cod in Massachusetts, where I lived for a while. And it was in Cape Cod that I started to like actually perform. And I, I just thought it was fun. It was just like another part of my life. And it wasn't until I was 11 that I really realized that this is what I want to do for a living. And it was probably when I was 11 that I considered myself like really thought about being like, I am an artist and that's who I was. And um, that's when my family moved to Los Angeles. And one of the things that I loved about their support and why we moved to Burbank was because the Burbank public schools were so great. Like that was literally mm -hmm. the number one reason why this was the, um, the neighborhood that we moved to or the, the city that we moved to. And um, one of the things, even though I was like really 
you know, I could act and I was not shy about, I don't know if I could act when I was 11, but I wasn't shy about acting when I was 11. Yeah. Um, I was always scared of singing and singing was one of my biggest fears. And, but I loved singing. And so that's why when I went into choir and we would perform and we performed at Disneyland once, speaking of Disneyland and my, my choir teacher, Mrs. Demore was so influential on me. And it was because of these classes that I took uh, in middle school that that's part of what got me over my fear of singing. And it's like now on, on my show, um, we have musical episodes on the show where I've had solos and I've sung and it's like, all these little things that led up to it led up to me being not scared of singing anymore. And like, so you were a triple threat from an early age. Yeah, I don't know how good my dancing is, but uh, <laughs> okay, it may be double. I mean, it's okay. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'll yeah. say I'll say I'm triple threat because it sounds better on a resume. You, you um, can get see, by. I'm still shy. You can get by. Yeah, I could get by. I could get by. I couldn't if I you put, if I was in a room with you, it would I would look like I was like flailing around um, aimlessly. But well, at least at least you got some some pieces in each one of the buckets right exactly. you can get the job done that's what exactly. matters exactly yeah so, totally when did you first consider yourself um an artist you know what's so funny i didn't even know i my experience was a little different i didn't even know you could be an artist yeah for a living until i was applying for colleges i'm like you can go to what you can go to college for art like cool. what yeah and, and then i thought that it was like you just went to college and play all day right because that's what i would i associated it with i was like always painting drawing dancing making music when i was growing up um my dad got me a, a clarinet because that was the cheapest in instrument it yeah. wasn't because i wanted to play clarinet it was like that one was he got that at a pawn shop and was like if you want to be in band here's an instrument and i was like cool i don't even know what's going on yeah but once i got into band uh, around the same age, I, th I think uh, 10, 11, so fifth grade, I didn't see myself as an artist first, but I saw myself as a musician. And I was like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna learn how to play this clarinet so good. And, uh, and then that turned into jazz band, turned into saxophone. And oh, cool. I, I was always painting and drawing, but it was around the idea of being like a comic book artist. Like I wanted to make comic books on the side. And so when I got older, I was like, yeah, I'm, I can, I did yearbook in high school. Oh, cool. You know, um, and, oh, I was in a talent show in, in like junior high, but it was like never until I was 18 did I have this like aha moment of, oh, I can be an artist, I'm an artist. It was all these little moments that was kind of chipping away, making it normal for me to create and express. Yeah. I never, you know, I never felt any like huge declaration. I just was like, it was a part of who I was, you know? And it was okay. Yeah. I was That's always like a creative, good. one of the creative kids, you know? Making yeah. different outfits, cutting up my clothes. And I, that's such a good way of saying it too, is that like, I feel like with most things in life, it's usually not this one single moment of like knowing, you know, or like, yeah or that gives you an idea, it is, it's a series of small moments that slowly piece together who you are and how you identify as a person. Yeah. And that's why it's so important. I mean, that's why I think you and I are both here, why we're both here with Create CA is because like, imagine, I, I just like imagine schools without any arts, with, you know, just like maths and sciences and all those things, which are obviously incredibly important, but without, without arts is like, every single day kids are going into school and they're seeing, oh, okay, this is what's important. Like these teachers, these authority figures, these people that hopefully I, the, the kids look up to um, in the best cases, you know, like this is what they're teaching me. So these are my options for an actual career, you know, like maybe I could yeah. paint, maybe I could do a play, maybe I could do this and it's like fun. But for right. a career, like that's not really a viable option. I need to be these things. And yeah. so they're not seeing it every day. They're not seeing, no, this is just as worthy of a career to be an artist in whatever way as it is to be, you know, the other side of the brain career. I think, I actually think that's really interesting because just like I was saying, it was just a part of my identity and it wasn't until I was older that I realized it could be a job. Mm, yeah. It was like, man, imagine if when when kids are little, we're told, you know, you could be a doctor, a lawyer, a fireman. It's like, you could be a doctor, a lawyer, a fireman, or a graphic designer. 
you know? Yeah. You know, yeah. or you could be, you could actually be a dancer for a living. And yeah. that can change the way that you approach it and take it more seriously because you know that there is a real career opportunity there. Um, so you're, we're both here. We're both ambassadors. Yes. You know, what does that mean to you? And you have, we both have, this is like our grand opening, our announcement. What is that? <laughs> what is your, tell us about your, what that means to you and your involvement with the, with the initiative. Yeah, I got being an ambassador. Um, it sounds so like international and exciting. Yeah. Um, Worldwide. <laughs> exactly. Um, it, to me, it means um, using the platform that I have and the voice that I have. I know I feel kind of cheesy saying it um, to uh, spread the word to people about things that matter to me. And in this case, the thing that matters to me is arts and schools and funding arts and schools. And not only that, but when laws are passed that they need arts and schools, have people actually follow through with the laws that are passed. Because what is it that like, I think legally all California schools are supposed to have a mandate for a certain amount of arts and schools. And I think only 12% yeah. of schools actually um, follow through with this mandate, even though it is mandated, literally. Yeah, um, yeah. it's like, you gotta have all the food groups, you know? I mean. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can't just have the, just the grains, or yeah. even though that does sound lovely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, for me, it's using my platform and using um, my own background as a kid who had arts in schools, who now does arts for a living and gets paid to have arts and lives in this house because of arts and has my clothes and my life because of arts, to tell people why we need the arts and yeah. to try to get more people to support that and uh, see the importance. Yeah, I think about that so much when I look back on my life, you know, I get to say, you know, if it wasn't for yearbook, I would have never learned Photoshop and photography, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I mean? and like, because of that, like, I was able to start my first small business and, you know, like, doing MySpace pages for bands, you know what I mean? Like, and it, oh, cool. and it it's the other thing is that it's so ubiquitous, like arts and culture are literally everywhere. Just imagine what, you know, <laughs> what imagine being what a stay at home order would be without Netflix, you know? Oh my or, God. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it, it literally is everywhere. And I think one of the reasons that maybe sometimes it's taken for granted is because it, we're so saturated with it mm -hmm. that we think that it maybe just, it comes out of nowhere that you just, magically pop up and you see someone on TV, but it actually takes a lifetime of learning and a lifetime of practice. And that often begins. And we, we want that to begin in the school system. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and have everybody have access to it. So what was the, like your experience in the Burbank, you know, uh, BUSD, how did, you know, how did it go in choir? Were you like, did you have to sign up or audition? Yes. So that's, that's another thing. Um, and it reminds me of something you said earlier when you were saying like having kids, it gives them an advantage earlier on to know that arts are an option. Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely had that advantage because my school was so good with the arts. So yeah, so with choir in sixth grade, I just signed up to be in the choir and then I went in for an audition and then I immediately got, put, there was like different levels of choirs. I think that's how it's at a lot of schools. And I immediately was put in like one of the higher choirs and part of that, part of that, why that happened is because I had already been focusing on arts as a younger mm. kid, you know, like that was yep. stressed in my household as well as in my schools. And so I already was put into like a higher up, I know it feels so weird saying that about like a middle school choir. I like, like that term though, higher choir is kind of like a little. Hey, little look at, yeah, yeah. It sounds like a poem almost. Very good. Yeah. I like, like how you say it. Um, and yeah, so I, I auditioned and I got put into a great choir and we had competitions and, um, uh, wait, what was the other part of your question? I just forgot. Well, just it. like, you know, um, what were your, what was your feeling about it at that time? But you kind of answered that you were already taking it seriously. Yes, that's, thank you. That's, that's exactly right. Thank you. Um, I was already taking it seriously. Yeah. And so because of that, like, because of taking art seriously from a young age, like I was on my first show, I did an episode of Mad TV when I was 11. And so I was already a professional when I was 11 years old. And so because arts was always an option to me, 
I was, I made it an option for myself. And I started my career when I was 11, very much what I wanted. Like it was never my parents pushing me or yeah. anyone pushing me. I basic, I was just very like steadfast little kid. And I was like, this is what I want. And I was fortunate enough to have parents that supported me. Um, but it's because I was like, I was told that it was an option again. And so, yeah, um, yeah. I think you that's know? One, of the, one of the big things there is um, we all have like this inner voice you know, yeah. and if that voice isn't acknowledged and supported, then sometimes that voice gets quieted and we don't yeah. get to see what people can become if we actually give them the support and encouragement, you know? Yeah. So like, I feel really lucky that I went to a school that had music programs, that had arts programs, because it was able to like take that little seed of like, you know, a kid who wanted to just make music who had no idea and like turn it into someone who like, can actually compose music and read music and like be in bands and ah. dance, you know? And so it, it kind of, it's like, to me, the way that I see it is like a, a little bit of a, of a circle of a system where you say, you know, there is a seed in here and if we don't water it, it's not going to grow. That's for sure. But if yeah. we do water it, there's, there's no limit to how like successful someone could become, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Let me see. I don't know if we're supposed to take questions. That's a good point. Hi, guys. <laughs> okay, I'm not. Circle. Yeah. That one is about right. Adobe Photoshop, but um, Does anyone we'll have talk any... about that. We'll talk any about that one. I'm going to use that one for, for another live about getting a career in the arts um, and like different ways that you can be in the arts. But what are you, um, what is your series going to be about? Do you know? Oh, gosh. Um, I, yeah, so I'm starting, so, so some of you know, I'm sure, Maceo, we've already kind of talked about it, but we're having, like, you know, our own series with Create CA, and we're going to have Instagram lives where we talk to different people. We're just talking to each other right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a little fun Create CA duo. And um, next week, I'm starting my own series with talking to different um, professionals in the arts, all different types of arts. Um, okay. Uh, painters, actors, writers, um, gardeners, like every, uh, that doesn't matter. Because arts, I think too, when people think of arts, they kind of limit their view of what arts means. But yeah. it means, I mean, you know, because you're, you're a multi-hyphenate. I do a few different things. Like you just know, yeah. like it's kind of limitless, which is a beautiful thing. Yeah. So I'm going to have like, you know, little fireside chats, as they say, with different professionals in the arts and see what they do in their jobs what their job is about, how they got there, why um, arts in schools has mattered to them and how that's influenced them to um, be the professionals that they are today. And yeah, mine is, my first one is next week. Okay. And um, yeah, for my special guest, it's still secret. So yeah, I'm excited. Right, right. What's your series about? So what I'm really interested in right now is a, a also like casting a wider net, but um, for me, it's around what the experience of participating in arts and um, arts education growing up kind of does for the inner inner human being you mm. know how it helps with our resilience and how it helps with our critical thinking and how it helps with our self-confidence um that's like something that i'm really uh passionate about and um just looking at the world we live in today it's like really hard to make it in any field and whether you are going out to be um you know, a football player or even a doctor, this spirit when you're learning piano of like, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. You know, like you're gonna fall when you're trying to learn that plie. You know, you're, you're, you're like, you're gonna stumble, you're gonna, yeah. you're gonna, you're gonna lose your balance, you know? Um, and, you know, music and arts and brushstrokes just teaches you that, hey, maybe you won't get it the first try. But if you can commit to this as a lifelong practice, like anything else, then you will start to see improvement. So that's one of the things that we'll be talking about on my series and, and the chat. Um, oh, I, I was that. just reminded that want to let everybody know there's a new graphic video online on the site that explains what Create oh, CA yeah. is about. And if you want to sign the pledge, go to createca.org. Um, and that is going to be the place where, of course, you can check back here, but it's going to be a place where, you know, people can get more information about the campaign and stuff. Um, let's see. So with where you are now today, um, can you imagine, like, what your life might have been like without arts education? 
Oh God, no. I don't even know what I would be doing. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine not having an arts education at all. Nope, I can't, I can't even imagine. Can you? <laughs> I think that um, I would probably be wearing like a gray suit. Yeah. And I'd be like very depressed. Yeah, that's the same thing. <laughs> I'd be wearing you know? a, a gray like skirt suit being really depressed or a regular suit, any kind of suit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think I might still wear a suit, but it would be like... I mean, suits are pink. sexy sometimes. You know, oh, like pink I don't know or, if I can use that word. or like <laughs> lamb or, or green or, or alligator skin or something. I don't know what, like, but I think that... I mean, a good uh, suit is good. I You mean, like, I know what you mean. Drab, you know, yeah. drab. Um, I think that... We're not what, talking James Bond suits over here. No, no, we're not talking James Bond. <laughs> I think that um, this is going to be a really exciting... Uh, project for both of us to participate in and to give us a chance to show um you know like some of like the insides of the art world yeah. um what um if anything do you have to let people you know say you know last couple of things before we sign off i know this was just like our introduction to the world but uh if you want to extend a special invite you know maybe now's the time to do that yeah, and I do. I want, and I'll, I will mention one other thing, um, which is when you're talking about what your series is going to be about, which I love, by the way, so much, um, and how important uh, art is for emotional health, obviously, which I think is, is what you were saying. Mm -hmm. um, but I also wanted to mention that that, like, especially applies to our world right now. You know, I mean, we're mm -hmm. in the middle. There's a lot of ter terrible things happening. There's a lot of progress happening. And there's also, there's a pandemic happening where people are literally stuck in their homes. And I saw some other people commenting about like creativity at home and support in the home and how important for me, especially, and I'm sure for a lot of people, including yourself right now is being, you know, in lockdown in our homes and how much art must be saving people right now. I mean, I know how much it's been helping me. Like, you know, during the first couple weeks of quarantine, I was just like an anxious mess. I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't doing anything. But then I found comfort in watching movies and in mm -hmm. watching shows. And I found comfort in watching other people's art. And then when I started to get a little bit more relaxed and comfortable, the, the when I really hit my stride and feeling cool again um, was when I started writing because I hadn't written in a while. Yeah. And I started writing and I've been writing now for the past few weeks and my emotional health has just been like getting better and better and better. And if I didn't, and I've, I'm also still watching a lot of movies and shows too. Um, but if I didn't have that tool of, of writing specifically, like this whole experience um, of, of, quarantine would be entirely different for me um and obviously that just speaks to our create at home initiative and uh, urging mm -hmm. people to be more creative at home and be creative with their kids at home them themselves be creative um because it is important it's creative being in schools and then to bring it home because like i just know it's yeah, like no, so that's safety. the beauty of it right that's the beauty of it is that this is like the kind of thing where once you invest in a person it's now they own it you know they yes. can be you know like when you develop that ability to write, to express yourself, to dance, then that's something you can carry with you your whole life. Yeah. And it can help you get through the difficult times. I'm so glad you brought that up. And so you can, it's like, it becomes a part of you. It you know? does. What are you doing right now? Because you do so many things. What are you doing from home? You must be doing creative. So uh, the, my version of that, what you were talking about is dancing. Cool. The way that I process my emotions and get in touch with myself is by moving my body um, like when words just can't say enough and when my thoughts are going crazy, you know, it's nice to just like put on some music and move just like in a way that feels good and just reminds me that, you know, I get to, I get to be safe and comfortable right here and, and like with what I have, you know, and it doesn't take much more than that to, to find a, a, a comfortable place, you know, so um, I love the Create at Home initiative. I think it's really good because you never know what tinkering with an idea can become. It could become, yeah. it can, it, not that it has to become some bigger project, but giving your chance to explore is what really unlocks our imagination. Yep. Yeah. What someone said, I'll just read a comment. Just animated. Hi, animated seven. He said, just wanted to say that a few years back, 
Uh, sorry, my phone's actually a little broken, so I can't read the <laughs> part of the right side of my screen. Um, oh, yeah. I, can, so can it's just a it? few years back, really insecure about art skills, and you have been very encouraging and want to do so much. So thank you. Oh, good. Yeah, that's thank you for saying that, uh, Matt. Actually, oh, no, I don't have it out right now. Matt made a, 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 an art, a piece of art without going into detail that I actually have in my room right now. Um, but yeah, no, that's the other thing is like making people know that they, um, they can be confident about their art and their skills. And all, also like skills always start at a certain point. Like oh, yeah. when the, I'm sure when you do some, I can't even think of an example. I'm going to sound like such a, I'm going to sound like I'm hundred years old. When you do some cool dance move, like you didn't come out of the womb doing that cool dance move. Like it's yeah, just kind to do that. And you need a space to be able to learn how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, it's it's wrapped up in so much, you know, our our critical thinking and our problem solving skills. You know, when we're talking about our ability to make sense of the news and what's going on into the world, going on in the world, I can't tell you how much um, my my work as a curator comes into play when I'm reading a news article. Mm. You know, being able to look at the world and all its complexities and say, oh, I can make sense of abstract concepts. Yeah. You know, yeah. I can I can make sense of abstract concepts because I learned in art, you know, that there is a word and that word is tied to a movement and that movement is tied to an emotion. And so I can now create, you know, a world where I'm able to understand what's going on and and you know and think for myself um and have the the confidence to to express. So I I feel like you know everything from a a politician writing a speech to, you know, what our street design, you know, the grid of our city yeah. looks like, you know, and it's not just let's get on stage and sing and dance, which is yeah. which is lovely, but it it's also has direct correlation to you know what they call um, essential services. Exactly, <laughs> in society, yeah, that's right. so true. That's so true. It does make you look at things differently, more creatively, and. It does I help you get jobs. I get job people hiring look to make sure that you have an arts background a lot of the time, even if it is like more essential services and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you're so right. Yeah. Uh, well, God, this has been so nice chatting. Maceo. Yeah. Well, look, um, I think they're going to announce the um, the episodes right here on Create CA. So if you're watching, follow this page, of course. Um, if you're not following Brittany, follow Brittany, and you're welcome to follow me as well. Yeah, also and follow Maceo. We'll, yeah, <laughs> it's we'll harder to do a shout out for yourself than for somebody else. Yeah, I mean. Oh yeah, Maceo, I, what's your? Because I'm you're coming from the Create CA thing, and I'm coming from mine. What's your? Why don't you put your? Um, oh, I see. Your Instagram see. in the bottom. I actually forgot that I was on. There's. And I was like, I'm looking at your. Create CA is above the top of your face over your glasses. So I was like, oh, hey, you should tell people where you are. My name is Create CA. Hi. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just put my thing up there. So you can follow me as well. And stay tuned for more Create CA content. I'm Maceo Paisley. Thanks, guys. I'm Brittany. This was fun. All right. We'll talk to you soon and have a good one. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Bye.